Now, first on the Western Slope, you're watching KREX 5 News at 6 p.m. Good evening and thank you for watching KREX 5 News this Saturday evening. I'm Chance Sicklin. Glad you could spend a part of your weekend with us. The Western Slope is gearing up for the holiday season. Downtown Grand Junction will be holding a tree lighting ceremony. Holiday lights will light up Main Street later tonight. Much more from that tree lighting ceremony presentation tonight at 10. But the Art Center in Grand Junction is also partaking in the holiday spirit with its annual holiday fine art and craft fair. The holiday art and craft fair is held each year during the weekend before Thanksgiving. Community members had a lot to pick from this year, including Christmas trees, jewelry, paintings, baked goods, and a whole lot more. Holiday music, smiles, and a chance to say hi to your neighbors were all part of this year's artistic and festive event. This is the Art Center's second largest annual fundraiser. Well, sticking with the holiday theme, the annual Hope West Holiday Show is back in the Grand Valley. The event is held over two days and raises money for Hope West kids. The Grand Junction Convention Center was the site for today's holiday show. The program includes kids from the Hope West program, but also receives help from the community and artists from the Western Slope. The Hope West Kids program helps children overcome difficulties, working through tough times and developing healthy coping skills. Items were also auctioned off at today's event and all proceeds benefit Hope West. The president and CEO of Hope West says events like this bring the entire community together around the holidays to help out kids in the Grand Valley. It's a community coming together really to have fun, to um, you know present a wonderful program and to support Hope West kids. And so this has become a tradition of starting the holiday um, with Hope West and we love it because we get to see old friends uh, that we've known over the years. Shamrock Foods, the largest independent food service distributor in the West, has now opened a new branch right here in Grand Junction. The company describes Shamrock as a one-stop food service resource that provides a fresh shopping experience for restaurant operators, home shoppers, and more. In partnership with Community Food Bank, Shamrock hosted a food drive and gifted a $2,000 donation to support those in need this week. Shamrock is not exclusive to restaurants and other hospitality businesses. Anyone in the community can join and shop and guess what? No membership is required. Ethanol blended fuel seemed like a great idea. The promise of lower emissions and a usable replacement for conventional gasoline appealed to many. But now experts say 90% of gasoline sold contains ethanol, which has unfortunately resulted in several consequences. After some more investigation, our reporter Austin Sack explains what people should be cautious of while at the pump. Around the country, 97% of filling stations offer gas blends with at least 10% ethanol, known as E10. But what most don't know is that ethanol can affect how easily your vehicle starts, runs, and how efficiently it operates. If you're a car person and you really love your car, you probably know never to go to the regular service station. You're going to need to be looking for ethanol-free fuel. If your car was built after 2003, it generally can handle the ethanol blends that are currently in our fuel. But some fueling stations are pumping gas with up to 15% of ethanol. And as more ethanol is mixed, there is a higher chance for corrosion. You are able to find service stations and fill up stations that don't have ethanol in their fuel. They're rare. Wait, before you fill up, are you aware of gas stations in the valley that do not contain ethanol? Well, stations like Phillips 66 here or, or here at Maverick, or even here at Sinclair off Highway 6. These three stations are free of ethanol blended gasoline and could help improve the life of your vehicle. Websites like puregas.org can help consumers learn what's in their gas and where the best places to fill up are. I come here on my Harley all the time because it has the ethanol free gas. I know it's higher, you know, like a dollar higher per gallon, but it's really like the only way to go when you're, when you're driving performance machines. While many Americans worked from home this pandemic, their cars were left sitting still and susceptible for ethanol corrosion to your car's engine and fuel system parts. If you're not driving a lot, you might be running into some damage from that ethanol having sat in your gas tank for this period of time. Uh, on cold mornings, you might have some engine starting issues. That's generally a sign uh, that there might be a trip to a service station uh, or a mechanic in your near future. Reporting first on the Western Slope, I'm Austin Sack, KREX 5 News. Sites like Pure Gas update their list of gas stations in the state and across the country consistently by knowing what gas stations near your home or stations along a lengthy road trip can help not only ensure you get the most gas for your buck, 
but that you are also taking care of your vehicle. For more pure gasoline sites and more information on ethanol blends, just head on over to our website, westernslopenow.com. A local road project that's been in the works for the last 30 to 40 years is on its final push towards completion as Grand Junction continues to grow at a rapid rate. The city and county have been working on providing an upgraded passageway connecting Highway 50 to Interstate 70. While they're already connected by 29 Road, once the updated construction project is complete, truck, tourist and local traffic will be able to access Grand Junction with ease. But organizers say the reason this project has taken as long as it has is due to individual sections of 29 Road needing to be updated, like the 29 Road Bridge and the overpass near Business Loop. We've just kind of been biting off pieces as we could heading, heading north towards the interstate. So this is the final piece that would make that entire route doable. It's an exciting project and uh, I, I know, you know, I wish that things could move quicker for sure. Um, but we, we'll, we'll go through what we need to go through to get this approved. An agreement between Mesa County and the contractor providing the repairs has been signed in the amount of more than $2 million. Organizers now need approval from CDOT. The project is expected to be completed by 2023. The Grand Junction Regional Airport is millions of dollars richer after some help from Washington. Through President Biden's American Rescue Plan Act, GJT just received a grant to fund airport relief. People from across the country are in a hurry to get to their desired loca location to see family and friends. One way to get there and hug your loved ones, of course, is by an airplane. Passengers aren't the only ones excited about traveling again. Airport officials are too. Now that the feds handed Grand Junction Regional Airport a little more than $3 million, the grant will go to help fund a variety of projects at the airport. With international travel back open, millions of Americans are packing airports across the country, and the Western Slope is no exception. GJT had more travelers last month in October than in, in entire airport's history, with 56,000 passengers. And Carry X5 caught up with two girls this week before boarding a plane to Belize to explain what, it is, what it's been like to travel again and what effects the pandemic has had on their lives. It's really nice and just feels more free than having to stay at home. Yeah, it's really exciting um, to get out of the house. It's kind of like made you realize like things and like it's made the th things like you weren't allowed to do during the pandemic like more fun. Yeah, I think it's kind of like affected our social life and like when we actually get to do things that makes us more excited to do them. In total, over the past two years, the federal government has given GJT about $60 million in grant revenue to help the airport continue to grow and succeed. Well, still to come here on Carry X5 News, a full weather forecast, plus millions of Americans are now eligible for a COVID-19 booster shot after the CDC widened the pool eligibility just last Friday. As we are less than a week away from the Thanksgiving holiday, public health, public health officials say it's important to get vaccinated before gathering inside. And sports with Jocelyn Stafford will be right back.